Again, you are here for making the most of your Mantis and Chromebook. So let's get started with our poll questions for today. If you've been with us before in the past, we have questions that we like to ask to the start of each webinar. We want to know what your job title is, where you're from, and how you heard about this webinar. We have a couple of specific questions related to the content of the webinar today we'd like to ask you as well. So if you would answer these questions as well, we want to know, first of all, how often do you work with Chromebooks? And your choices are daily, weekly, monthly, or never. Uh, definitely helps us to know how much Chromebook knowledge you have. In addition, we want to know what apps do your students use most often on Chromebook? And in this question, you check all that apply. Uh, Sheets, Drive, Docs, Classroom, Gmail, Slides, Other, or Not Applicable. Again, this one, um, all these Google apps, which ones do your students use most on Chromebook? Check all that apply. Sheets, Drive, Docs, Classroom, Gmail, Slides, Other, or Not Applicable. Good to have Sully with us today. Sully, thanks for coming in and joining us. It's good to be back in the driver's seat here running the controls, Paul. Thanks for that. Uh, say, thanks for that welcome. Betsy is out for a little well-deserved R&R. Good to join the crew. Yep, like uh, old times, like a year ago, right? Just like, just like old times. That's exactly right. We were getting started with all of this stuff, and the madness was here, and Looks like we're maybe going to be returning to a little bit of madness. So. And if, if I remember correctly, a year ago was actually 10 years ago. It's actually been 10 years since last year. Isn't that how it's working now? <laughs> the years are much, much longer. So it, it's it like, does sort of feel that way, doesn't it? It's like some sort of reverse, like in dog years kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. In COVID years. In COVID years. I'm only 25 in COVID years. That's the beauty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's pretty funny. All right, well, it looks like um, looks like we've got about uh, eighteen people that have responded to the poll so far. We've got about forty people that have come in so far. So, if you are unable to get in and drop any of your responses into the uh, the poll question, feel free to go ahead and drop your responses into the into the chat. All right, Paul, shall we, uh, shall we end the poll and shall we review the responses? Sure. And then we can give everyone their code that they're looking for. Absolutely. All right. We're going to go ahead and end the poll. Joining us today, uh, William Freeman, the tactile technology product manager from APH. Uh, he's done a number of webinars like this for us on other subjects and uh, Mantis and Chameleon webinars. And today we get to hear a little bit about how Mantis works with Chromebook. Some challenges that you might face. Chromebooks, you know, they're the laptop, laptop of choice for most schools, but they don't have the greatest Braille support. So that can be a problem for students who rely heavily on Braille. Uh, daily access to Braille is extremely important. We always try to emphasize that. And a school's reliance on Chromebook can uh, make that even more difficult. You know, how do you get Braille in somebody's hands if the system they're using doesn't work well with it? And navigating Chromebook can definitely be challenging because it requires learning a new screen reader. We talk about how easy or hard it can be to switch from one screen reader to another. Well, uh, even going from JAWS to NVDA, there's some similarities, but going to Chromebox, it can be a different situation. So we'll talk more about that today as well. Our learning objectives, we're going to learn how to connect the Mantis Braille display to a Chromebook. Learn five hot keys you can use with the Mantis while using a Chromebook. 
We'll identify three reasons why Mantis is the optimal Braille display to use with Chromebook, and there are several reasons for that. So to get to our content, let's turn this over to William. Great. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Jim. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending today. I'm real excited to get into this topic. Um, we're going to start with the basics. We'll get into hotkeys. Then we'll go over some general uh, Chromebook accessibility. And hopefully you folks will learn stuff along the way. And if you've got any questions as we're going along, you know, again, please throw it in the chat. Uh, and we'll we'll get to it as soon as we can. So kind of, you know, right off the bat is why Mantis and Chromebooks? So the answer is fairly simple. It's uh, it's primarily because the Mantis has a QWERTY keyboard. So the Mantis is a 40 cell Braille display with a QWERTY keyboard. And Chromebooks are really screen readers in general are easier to navigate using QWERTY keyboard commands. You just have more options. Um, when you're using, you know, there's either a QWERTY keyboard and then there's the Perkins keyboard. You know, the Perkins keyboard being the six or eight, eight button with a space bar um, keyboard you find on most Braille displays. Um, well, the hotkeys are really complicated with the Perkins and then there's there's usually less of them. There's just less possibilities. So there's less, less uh, hotkeys for quick navigation. Um, now, the other thing, and this is a really key, unique thing here, is um, with the Chromebook typing in contracted Braille on a Perkins keyboard is not always consistent. You know, we hope over time it's going to get better. You know, we don't want to give up on Chromebook. We don't want to give up on Chromevox. But right now, typing with a Perkins keyboard has issues. So if you're just trying to type text with your Perkins, you are going to run into some problems. Like if you try to type C for can, you might get can, you might get C, uh, you might get something else. And so that's that's a level of inconsistency that does not happen with a QWERTY keyboard. Um, in addition, though, the other thing you want to think about is that 40 cells. So I mean, the 40 cells, it's going to give you, you know, the standard line of Braille, so the most Braille content. So you've got the QWERTY keyboard, you've got the Braille content, and then that's improving the uh, accessibility of the Chrome box itself. Before we get too far, let's just talk about the Mantis to make sure we all know what it is. I already said it's got 40 Braille cells. Uh, I've got a picture of it up on the screen right now. And the Braille is at the bottom of the device. So on the bottom of the face of the device. So you've got the 40 Braille cells. These are traditional piezoelectric Braille cells. So if you don't know what piezoelectric is, that's kind of the standard for Braille technology. So these are standard Braille cells, tried and tested. And then above the 40 Braille cells are 40 router keys. This is how you move the cursor. So you can jump quickly, you can select things, you can activate buttons using these router buttons. And then above those is the QWERTY keyboard itself. The QWERTY keyboard is a laptop style keyboard. So you've got the QWERTY, you know, so all the letters, the numbers, all your standard buttons, and then the function buttons at the top. So F1 through F12. And then the one thing it's missing is a numpad. So you're not gonna have a numpad and you're not gonna have the little uh, six pack of buttons, insert, delete, home, end, page up, page down. But, you know, you can, you can get through without those. Uh, it also has tactile markers on the escape key, the F4, F8, F12, F, J, and down arrow. So those tactile markers will be helpful when you're, when you're first orienting yourself to a QWERTY keyboard. Real quick, uh, this is a close-up photo of the Mantis Q40's left side. So the left side it starts with, and it's this has that green TPU case on it. So um, at the top of the left side is the USB-C. Um, and the USB-C is how you connect to the Chromebook. It's also how you power your Mantis. So a cool thing there is while you're connected to the Chromebook, you're not going to have to worry about the power supply to your Mantis. The Mantis battery isn't going to run down. It's going to be fine. 
um, you're going to be okay. The USB-A is also on the left side of the Mantis. The USB-A is just for external storage. So I'm saying this to be clear, when you connect to your Chromebook, you're going to connect via that USB-C port. It's the smaller port um, there on the left side, and it's the one on the top. So if you find the power button and go up, you know, if you're holding the Mantis up, kind of facing it, and you find the power button, go up, that's the USB-C. That's where you're plugging in to connect to the Chromebook. Um, I see some chat about the search key, and we are going to cover the search key. Uh, I think the way that the Mantis handles it, and it's the way all Bluetooth keyboards handle it, is actually really good and is going to be familiar to users um, that are either used to using Chromebooks or new to Chromebooks. So I think we're going to be in a good good position there. All right, so this next one is just a quick to go over the USB-C cable. So you're going to connect via USB only. Uh, Bluetooth does not work when going from a Mantis uh, to a Chromebook. The reason is, and I don't quite understand the reason myself, just to be quite honest, but basically when you connect to a Chromebook via USB, you're using Chrome Vox. When you connect to... Um, Chromebook via Bluetooth, some of what you're using is Brailleback. And so the updates that are necessary to get it to work over Bluetooth aren't there. But they are there via USB, so we're good. But you will need to use a USB cable. I've got two pictured here. The one on the left is a USB-A to USB-C cable. This is what comes with the Mantis. I suggest trying this cable first since if you have a Mantis, you already have this cable. But the USB-A is the larger one. That's what you're going to plug into the Chromebook. The USB-C is the smaller one. That's what you're going to plug into the Mantis. The other cable I have pictured here is a USB-C to USB-C cable. This is, some folks may need to use this cable, and it'll depend on your Chromebook. Some Chromebooks don't have a USB-A port. And so you'll need a USB-C to USB-C. It doesn't matter which end you put in the Chromebook and which end you put in the Mantis when you're using this cable. Um, you know, I suggest trying the one that came with your Chrome with your Mantis first. If that doesn't work, you may need to go out and purchase this other one. And they, they are pretty cheap. They're gonna cost anywhere from $5 to $15. Does an adapter work okay? That's a good point. An adapter would work okay as well. If you have an adapter, that'll do a USB-C to USB-A adapter. You could also use that. That's a good point. And I, I wish I'd included that on my slide. Let's talk about Chromebook accessibility. Um, so Chromevox, I've already said that name, but that is the name of the Chromebook screen reader. Um, one key thing that we've actually already discussed a little bit is um, on the Mantis. So every, every screen reader has a modifier key. And the reason screen readers have a modifier key is because they can't interfere with the hotkeys of the operating system and of all the programs on that operating system. And so what they do is they have a special key that's typically not used for hotkeys that they then use for hotkeys. As has already been discussed in the chat, on the Chrome Vox, this is the search key. So typically on a Chromebook keyboard, the search key is located where the caps lock key usually is. So it's above the shift key. On the Mantis, the search key, the Chromevox modifier key is the Windows key, okay? So that's, that's what you're gonna use. Anytime we say Chromevox key, you're gonna use the Windows key. And then our next slide here, we, we go back to our picture of the Mantis. Basically, all of the hotkeys that you're going to be using are in the lower left corner of the keyboard. So I've got a picture of the Mantis, and then I've highlighted with a red circle the main keys you're going to be using. So Shift, Control, Function, Windows, and Alt. If you're coming up along the left edge of your Mantis, the first key you'll encounter is the Control key, and then Shift is above that. And then function is to the right of control. And then Windows is to the right of that. And then Alt is to the right of that. And then you get the space bar. So 
luckily they're all grouped together. Uh, we're going to talk a bit later about sticky keys uh, for folks who either need a one-handed mode or have difficulty holding down buttons, because some of these hotkeys can get complicated. So we will talk about sticky keys before we get too far into this. So kind of the first thing is enabling Chromebox. There is a hotkey to turn it on. I would suggest using the hotkey. The hotkey is Control plus Alt plus Z. Control plus Alt plus Z. Before you connect your Mantis to your Chromebook, turn on Chromebox. You don't have to turn on Chromebox first, but you do want to get in the habit of when you're connecting your Braille display to your screen reader, you want your screen reader to be on first. It does make the, it makes the process a lot smoother. Um, if you don't want to use the hotkey, they have kind of buried their accessibility options. So first you have to go to settings and we'll talk about getting to settings on the next slide, but first you go to settings, then you go to advanced, then you go to accessibility, then you go to manage accessibility features, then you have the option enable Chromebox. And I've got a couple pictures here of both the advanced part where you find accessibility and then the screen where you find Chromebox. So they kind of bury it. It's good to know where this is. Some of the other stuff we're gonna talk about today is also kind of buried in this menu. So it's good to be able to get there. So you go settings and then advanced and then accessibility and then manage accessibility features and then enable Chromebox. Um, we do have, this information is gonna be available in um, some of the links that we share today. So one of the things about Chromebooks and folks, you know, it seems like most of the folks on here have used Chromebooks a fair amount, but they do hide the settings menu. I don't know why they do this. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but I was super confused when I first started using a Chromebook and to find settings, you actually have to go click on, you can either use your keyboard to focus on the time and press enter, or you can use your mouse to click on the time so where it says the time in the lower right hand corner, and then that opens up this kind of uh, all purpose menu. And then within that is the settings menu. It's a little cog and it's gonna be between the lock screen and before the collapse menu button. Uh, but you're just looking for that cog. I don't know why they hit it. Like I understand like you wanna not have clutter in your uh, user interface but there's a difference between having clutter and making things hard to find. So that's, that's kind of setting up the Chromebook. So you wanna set up the Chromebook, you wanna turn on Chromebox. Now, then you wanna plug in the Mantis with your USB-C cable. Now you wanna enable terminal mode on the Mantis. So make sure the Mantis is turned on. Uh, you wanna press the home key on the Mantis that's the little round key on the front edge of the Mantis. And then that will take you to the main menu and it'll put you at the top of the menu. Your device will say editor. So just press T for terminal using that first letter navigation, or you can just press down arrow once. Then that'll make the Mantis say terminal. Just press enter. Then it'll say connected devices, press enter again. And then it'll say USB connection and go ahead and press enter again. So you get to terminal, then to connected devices, then to USB connection. Now, when there's no connection available, your Mantis will say braille display and that's all it will say. The, the thing to do if you're connected to Chromebox or to any other screen reader is go ahead and move your cursor. So press tab, use the mouse, uh, do something to change what the, the screen reader is looking at, basically, and then that will update the Braille, and then you should have a Braille, Braille connection. If you're not able to get a Braille connection, try connecting it again, but it should work, uh, and this part should be fairly straightforward. So sticky keys. Um, sticky keys works a lot like it does on Windows, and we'll talk about how it works but a lot of these hotkeys require pressing multiple keys at the same time. 
So you're having to press all these keys. It can be problematic. Um, and sticky keys can make that easier. You're going to go exactly to the same place that you go to activate Chromevox. So you're going to go settings, advanced, accessibility, manage accessibility features. And then under keyboard and text input, you're going to have enable sticky keys. The way sticky keys work is you press the key twice in order to hold it. So pressing it once does nothing. Pressing it twice holds it. If you hold a button by accident, you can press it a third time to release it. So as an example, if you have sticky keys enabled and you want to do the hotkey combination control F, you can just press control control and then that will hold in the control button and then press F. So you can do all of this with one finger. So just control control and then F. So that's, that's how you do sticky keys. Now we are ready for our first uh, poll question. And if there are um, any questions uh, in addition to the ones we've had already, please feel free to put those in the chat. Absolutely, this is a perfect time to throw your questions in while we work on this next poll question. And that is this, what is the Chromevox modifier key when using the Mantis? And your choices are caps lock, Windows key, function, or the control key. What is the Chromevox modifier key when using the Mantis? Caps lock, Windows key, function, or control? Key review like getting into terminal mode. Um, yeah, I don't know that we'll be able to troubleshoot uh, your particular Mantis during the webinar. But you should be able to just press the home button to get you back to editor, press down arrow once, and then press enter three times. So you press it once to enter the terminal, you press it again to enter connected devices, you press it a third time to enter USB connection. And if you still can't get it to work, um, you know, you can email cs at aph.org and we can help walk you through the process over the phone or through through email whichever you prefer you know william it might not be a bad idea to remind the audience too about doing an update to the mantis at some point as well during this this time because that could uh could be helpful but uh, no that's ready? a good point um you want you do want to make sure your mantis is up to date if you're connected to the internet, you should just be able to go into settings, um, software update, and then it'll, it'll go check the servers. If there is an update available, it'll ask you, do you want to update? Just say yes. Um, and then, oh, yes, that's a good point. We did change how the terminal works. So if you aren't updated, you will have a different process to get into the terminal. Thank you for that, Nancy. That is a great point. Um, so yeah, you do want to make sure you update. If you don't want to update over Wi-Fi, or if you have issues with like your school security settings on your Wi-Fi, what you can do is you can download the latest update from the APH shop page. Um, Jim, would you mind grabbing the link to the Mantis shop page, please? Yeah, and I, I'm happy to, I, I will do that after we review the this poll. Cool. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, no, that's great. And then just real quick. So while you're on the MPH shop page, you can download the latest update. Just put that on a thumb drive, plug that thumb drive into your Mantis or your Chameleon, and then it'll locate it and then it'll walk you through the update process. Love all of that, uh, all that info coming from uh, the Western part of Michigan with, uh, with Nancy. So. Yeah. Hey, um, okay, so we um, we finished the poll, and the question again was, what is the Chromebox key when using the, the Mantis? Again, what is the Chromebox key when using the Mantis? So 7% of you said caps lock, 73% said Windows key, 7% said function, and 13% said control. William, what, uh, what's the answer? The correct answer is the Windows key. 
So when you, whenever it says Chromevox modifier key, you're going to be pressing the Windows key on your Mantis. All right. And we did get another question. Can the Mantis connect to any laptop? Um, yes. So the Mantis supports Windows 8 or later. Um, it supports the latest versions of Mac OS and it supports Chromebooks. So if you have either a Windows, Mac, or Chromebook, um, you should be able to connect to it. On Mac and Windows, you can use Bluetooth. And we have webinars and videos and documentation about that. And then on Chromebooks, it's USB only. So, all right, let's get into, thanks for putting that link in the, in the chat there, uh, Sully, really appreciate that. Let's get into key basics and frequently used hotkeys. So this is the part where it gets a little iffy because I am going to be talking a lot about keys. I decided to do this as a PowerPoint rather than stream from my Chromebook because I didn't want to have to fight Chromevox and try to do a webinar and have Zoom running all at the same time. It can get really overwhelming. So what we're going to do is just talk about it and then I've got screenshots and I'm going to be describing things as we go through. But it is much easier than it looks or than it seems. Um, the most important key is tab. Okay, tab is how you're going to move between different items within the current window. This is true of Windows. So if you've been using JAWS, if you've been using NVDA, this isn't going to uh, this isn't going to be a big surprise to you. So tab is going to move you around between different items. Shift tab, the shift key. Basically, you can think of shift as the backwards key. So shift is going to shift plus tab is going to move you backwards. So tab moves you forwards. Shift tab moves you backwards. You can basically add shift to any hotkey combination, and it will then move you in the opposite direction. So tab to move forwards, shift tab to move backwards. The other important basic hotkey combination is alt tab. So alt tab, you can almost think of alt tab as super tab because what alt tab is gonna do is it's gonna move you between different windows or programs. This too is the same as on windows. So if you've been using windows, um, this is not, this is gonna be familiar to you. So alt tab, and so you just hold down alt and then press tab and that will move you between the different windows and programs that you have open. Every time you press tab, it'll move you to a different program until you release alt, and then it will set you on the program you selected. Enter, no surprise, is gonna activate items. I don't think I'm saying anything that's gonna you know, blow anybody's mind here. Now, a really important hotkey and this is a standard Chromebook hotkey, it's not even an accessibility hotkey, is Control F. And Control F, Control F is probably the most powerful hotkey combination ever. It's for find, and I use it all the time. If I'm reading a document, if I'm reading a website, Control plus F is find. And so if you need to get some specific information and you're not sure where to find it, Control plus F, and then just type in what it is you're looking for, and then it will find it for you and put you in that good location to find it. Some other standard hotkeys. These again, these nothing, nothing about these are really special for accessibility. These are just standard. Control X for cut, control C for copy, and control V for paste. Control X for cut, Control C for copy, Control V for paste. Uh, these are great hotkeys that folks should really get used to using uh, for cut, copy, and paste, especially when you're working with students who don't have access to a mouse and maybe don't want to bother with the context menu. Ah, uh, can I have the undo buttons? Undo is another great all powerful hotkey and it is control Z. I love control Z. If I were to get a tattoo, I would probably get a tattoo that said control plus Z on it. Uh, control Y is redo. So control Z to undo, control Y to redo. So those are all standard hotkeys. Um, 
And yeah, it is ironic for a tattoo because you can't undo it. Uh, let's talk about speech rate. Um, I think screen readers are pretty famous for going really, really fast and being hard to understand. You got, you got to, you know, and you all know this, but you got to get your students, you know, comfortable with knowing, you know, you don't have to go really fast right now. You know, you, you can go slow and encourage them to go slow. And the way you adjust your speech rate is you hold down the Chrome Vox key, the Windows key, and you press left square bracket to go faster. And then you hold down the Chrome Vox key plus shift and then the left square bracket to go slower. So Windows plus square bracket to go faster, Windows plus shift plus square bracket, left square bracket to go slower. You can also increase the pitch and decrease the pitch. That's gonna be the same thing except right square bracket. So Chromevox plus right square bracket to increase the pitch, uh, Chromevox plus shift plus right square bracket to decrease the pitch. So, you know, find, let, help them find a speed and pitch that they're comfortable with, and then make sure they know how to adjust it. Because sometimes, you know, if you're reading a, you know, a long story, maybe you wanna go real fast. If you're going through chemical equations, maybe you need to go slow on that, that particular thing. So being able to on the fly increase and decrease your speech rate will be very helpful. Um, another very, very important Chromevox hotkey is control. Just press control at any time to make it stop speaking. Can you change the voice? Um, you can typically change the voice. And I was looking for that information. And I was not able um, to change the voice on Chromevox. So you might be able to in, in a newer version or something. But I was not able to change the actual voice. I could just change the speed and the pitch. All right. So. We've gone over some really basic hotkeys. We've gone over the speech rate hotkeys. And now we're gonna get a little more complicated with the jump commands. But I think these are, you're gonna notice a pattern about these hotkeys as we're going into them. So the jump commands are gonna jump. They're gonna do just that. They're gonna jump your students uh, from to these specific locations. So we've got jump commands for buttons that's gonna jump you to the next button. Combo box, you know, that's combo box is a type of user interface. Uh, screen reader users are gonna typically be more familiar with these terms. These are terms like the only people that know these terms are web developers and screen reader users. And, um, but combo box, it's a type of dropdown. Uh, editable field, you know, that's just a text box. So, you know, where you type your name when you're signing up for something form field, you know, that's a type of form that you have to, it's self-explanatory really, but it's a type of form that you, you have to fill out. And then heading, I think that one's obvious. So heading and then links. So any of the links that you might need uh, in, in your article or whatever it is you're looking at and then tables. So anything that's been correctly uh, made into a table, you can jump to it. The hotkeys for these are all really easy to remember because it's just the Chrome Vox key plus the first letter of the thing. So to jump to a button is Chrome Vox plus B. To jump to a heading is Chrome Vox plus H. To jump to a link, it is Chrome Vox plus L. To jump to a table is Chrome Vox plus T. Um, so these are a good quick way to be able to jump to specific parts of a web page um when you're using chromevox and thank you virginia so you can change the voice in chromevox settings i was looking at looking for it when i was preparing for this and that was something i didn't see but i sort of i i tend to leave the default voices so it's not something that i um, would have changed myself anyway so the next thing is a really powerful um type of hotkey these are the, yes, and you can, you can add shift to these to go backwards. So any of these hotkeys, so Chromevox plus H to go to the next heading, you can do Chromevox plus shift plus H um, to, to go back backwards to the previous heading. 
Do we have voice activation for these buttons for those who have limited function of hands? Um, you know, that's not something that I was able to try out. Uh, it's a really good question. Um, I, I really can't say. It's something I'll have to try out myself after the webinar. Um, I would recommend using sticky keys. So if you are able to use to you know press one button at a time, you can use sticky keys uh, for these button combinations. So you would just activate sticky keys, and then you just press Chromebox twice. So Windows, Windows, and then you press the letter. So you could go Windows, Windows, H, would be the, the jump command for headings. Now the next set of commands, these are list commands. And for the most part, these are gonna follow that same pattern of the first letter. The really cool thing about the list command hotkeys is you really only need to know one of them because once you use one of them, it takes you to a list view. And then that list view is going to let the um, user move around among the different types of list view. Um, but they are heading list. So that's going to give you a list of all the headings. There's a landmark list. It's going to give you a list of all the landmarks. And landmarks are something that's pr that are programmed specifically for accessibility. So these are key parts of the page that have been programmed in by the developer for accessibility. There's a links list command, and then a forms list, and then a table list. And so these are all just going to show you a list of all those things. So you can quickly review them. You can jump to that part of the page. And it can give you an idea of the shape of the page as well. And this is just Chromevox plus control plus the letter, with one exception. And that's the landmark list. So the landmark list is Chromevox plus control plus semicolon, because link list has already taken up Chromevox plus control plus L. You've got two that start with L, so one of them had to change. And it's just the, the next one over, the next key over. Um, but a landmark is a, it's, it's basically just a spot that's been programmed in by the developer as a, a place for the keyboard user, the accessibility user to land. So it's kind of an, think of it almost like an artificial place that the developer thought would be important enough to program in so that it could be landed there. We also have uh, some other questions coming in, but I'm going to get to the list view, talk about that, and then our next question before I jump to these other, these uh, answer these other questions that are coming through. These are great questions. I really appreciate them. So the really cool thing about the list view is when you go to the, when you put in the hotkey, for any of them, it takes you to this list view. I have a screenshot here. It can be a little hard to see uh, visually, but it's basically got all of those. So right now it's showing the heading list view. So what I did was I went to the American Printing House for the Blind Wikipedia page, and then that's all the headings from that Wikipedia page. And the user can just press up arrow, down arrow to move through. They can select which heading they want, Notice there's numbers here too. So like at the top, it's American Printing House for the Blind heading one, uh, contents heading two. So that's giving an idea of the shape of the page. Now you can also press right arrow or left arrow to move to the other types of list view. So you can go from heading to landmark, to link, to form controls, to tables. You, so this powerful list view gives you a way to examine the entire page uh, very quickly just by knowing one hotkey. So you could do Chromevox plus control plus H for heading, Chromevox plus control plus L for link, or, or whatever it is you need to do. So let's go to our poll question. So they'll read out the poll question, and then I'll try to answer these other questions while we're giving folks a chance to answer. And then we'll move on to the last section here. So here's the last poll question if you want to go Paul. All right. So the question is, what is the hotkey to show the links list? So we've talked about several different hotkeys. Which one is the one that you're going to use to bring up the links list? Control plus L, 
Chromevox plus L, Chromevox plus Control plus L, or insert F7, the links list. So thank you for that, Paul. And so while folks are answering that, I got a question here. My student is just starting to learn to type on a QWERTY keyboard. Can we use the Mantis without Chromevox turned on and use a typing program like Talking Typer or Typing Club to learn the keyboard? Yes, you can. So one of the really great things about the new HID protocol that we're using, so that the HID protocol, that's how you're connecting the Mantis to other devices. The cool thing about that new protocol is the Mantis is a Bluetooth keyboard. The Mantis is a QWERTY keyboard. It's a QWERTY keyboard with a Braille display. Previously in the past, um, displays like the Mantis, it would be a Braille display. And then the, the keyboard part would be kind of hidden. Like, uh, you know, you would know physically that the keyboard was there, but the software wouldn't know the keyboard was there. And you'd only be able to use the keyboard through the uh, screen reader. Well, with the Mantis, it just is a QWERTY keyboard. And then it has a Braille display as well. So yes, the, the, the thing you're talking about is totally possible. You just plug it in with your USB cable, and then you'll be able to type and do everything you need to do. And you won't need to use Chromevox as well. You won't get Braille. You won't get Braille. That's the thing is you won't get Braille, but you will be able to type and use it as a way to get familiar. Um, oh, so with Mantis and Chromevox, redo is control plus Y, not control plus shift plus Z. Um, yeah, control plus Z for undo and control plus Y for redo is pretty standard. Um, they're my favorite hotkeys. Um, more control Z than control Y, but they're both they're both really useful. And yeah, that's just why it is that way. It goes back to like really early hotkeys in computing. All right, are we ready to talk about this um, poll question? We are ready to talk about this poll question. All right, so uh, the question again was, what is the hotkey to show the links list? This is a single choice. One option was control plus L, 16% of you said that was correct. The other is Chromevox plus L, 24% of you said that was correct. Then you have Chromevox plus Control plus L, 56% of you said that was correct. And then finally insert F7, 4% of you said that was correct. So just one of you. So William, what's the correct answer? The correct answer is Chromevox plus Control plus L. And that is to bring up the links list. And again, once you bring up those list views, you can access all those different ways of navigating. So really, if you can just teach your student one of those, whether it's control plus Chromevox plus L, control plus Chromevox plus H, if you can just teach them one, they get access to all these powerful ways of moving around on their, uh, their Chromebook. So just teach them one at least. All right, so let's talk about the other accessibility features on the Chromebook. And, you know, these can be useful. You know, if, if, even if you've got a student and you know that student needs to learn Braille and they're gonna be a Braille reader primarily throughout their life, if they have vision, you know, odds are they're gonna to wanna to use that vision. And so there are, you can supplement Chromevox with other accessibility tools that are available on the Chromebook. So there's magnification. The hotkey to enable magnification is control plus Chromevox plus M. So control, Chromevox, M. When you need to zoom in, it's control, shift, plus. Zooming out, control, shift, minus. And then to reset, you just, so these are, those keys are all next to each other. You know, so you've got plus, minus, and then to reset is zero. So anytime you need to reset the resolution, either to, you know, the teacher is confused by the magnification, or if the student needs to turn the computer over to somebody else, control plus shift plus zero. Um, one of the neat things about magnification on the Chromebook is you can actually leave it on. So you can leave it on 
Um, and then the hotkeys are available to be used and it doesn't really otherwise interfere with the use of the thing. I see we've got a troubleshooting question in the chat and we'll get to that during our last poll question. Now, the other one you might wanna use is high contrast mode. Now there's a special issue here with high contrast mode. So in order to use high contrast, you have to temporarily turn off Chromevox or you can go turn it on the long way. But the hotkey, and I don't know why they did this, but the hotkey to turn on high contrast mode is Chromevox plus shift plus H. Now you might remember, this is the same hotkey that is used uh, for headings. So to jump to the next heading, well, to jump to the previous heading is Chromevox plus shift plus H. So you have to temporarily turn off Chromevox, control alt plus Z, then you can use this hotkey to turn on high contrast mode. Now it will say, are you sure you wanna turn on high contrast mode? So if you need to use a screen reader, you're not gonna to wanna to turn off your screen reader because then you, you'll, you'll have trouble navigating that, uh, that question. So you can turn it on the long way, which again is going settings, advanced, accessibility, manage accessibility features, used high contrast mode. So you can turn it on the long way and leave Chromevox turned on, uh, but they did kind of double book, they double booked this hotkey command. Now, the next thing, a word about ear cons. So ear cons, it's a play on the word icons. It's a neat thing that they're trying to do on the Chromebook, but there is an accessibility problem here. So ear cons are icons that you can hear. And so when you go to an icon, a sound plays positionally based on the position of that icon on the screen. So if the icon's on the right side of the screen, it's gonna play on the right side of your headphones. So the right ear of your headphones or your speakers. If it's on the left side, it'll play on the left side. That's a really neat idea, but there's a problem here. <laughs> if the student is deaf in one or both ears, they're not gonna know about that ear con. Now there, it, the, the other issue here is that ear cons do not display in Braille. So if you if you tab to an ear con, I really hate that word. The more I say it, the more I don't like it. Sounds but, like something. <laughs> sounds like something out of Star Trek. Yeah, it does. Um, but yeah, when you tab to that ear con, if you're deaf, you're not going to know it's there. You're just going to tab, and it's going to seem like nothing's there. And you might even be confused, like, "Hey, what's going on? Why am why am I tabbing and not getting any Braille feedback?" And it's because of these ear cons. Uh, I noticed there's a petition to make them optional. Um, I encourage folks, you know, let Google know, make these optional. There's an accessibility issue here. Um, but for now, just be aware that they exist and, and make sure you warn your students, especially those that have difficulty hearing. Are they just an empty space? What do they actually do other than orientation? They're for orientation. So when you're in an app, There'll be a little icon that'll be like representing the app or you know representing the brand of the app so they're not buttons they're not the most important information but they're slightly more than decorative so i feel like hiding them like this isn't a good thing even though i think i think they meant well by creating them but i think there's issues with them overall so the google suite a lot of folks are using the Google Suite, you know, Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Chrome, Google Classroom. We had someone with a comment that they were trying to use Google uh, Docs, and then um, and then um, they were trying to use Google Docs, and then the Mantis stopped working. That that is a uh, bug that should be fixed. So you shouldn't have that issue. If you have that issue, write into customer service and let us know. That's not something that I've been seeing. I've been using, you know. Uh, my Mantis with the Chromebook quite a lot, but if that's something that occurs, let us know and let us know what was happening when it happened so that we can work with Google to get that resolved. And I think, yes, sometimes ear cons are buttons, but uh, um, there's also a lot of ear cons that are just sort of decorative. So, 
it's, it is definitely an accessibility issue. The other thing here is start out slow. Start out with these basic apps. The Android Chromebook, it's kind of the Wild West. It has the same problem of Windows in that basically anybody can make an app for it. So some of the apps are accessible, some of them aren't. Chromevox is going to work better with some things than with others. It's going to work well with the Google Suite because it's controlled by the same developer. So start here. So the student gets a good first impression. They know that they know the basics. They don't blame themselves when there's an issue. Uh, get them used to creating folders, moving files, using basic hotkeys. You know, don't worry about the more advanced hotkeys. Like I know we covered a ton of hotkeys today, but just start them with those very basics. Get them used to just tabbing around. Uh, if they can just tab around and press enter, they're going to know something that will get them through basically everything. And then they can learn those more advanced hotkeys later on. Now, more help. There is more help. So number one, Chromevox has a built-in tutorial. So where you activate Chromevox, again, settings, advanced, accessibility, manage accessibility features, enable Chromevox. Once you turn on Chromevox, below it in that menu structure is going to be the option open Chromevox tutorial. Have your student do that tutorial. You know, that tutorial is not going to be the end all be all of their training. It's not like you can just do that and then you're done. Um, but once you, you do it, you'll have a good baseline. How do we get to where the time is to activate that? Uh, I'm not sure about the question, um, but you do have, you have to turn on Chromevox first. So turn on Chromevox and then previously there was nothing there. Um, and then once it's turned on, it'll be there. You know, I don't know how to get there with the keyboard command. I'm sure you can. You can do control F. So you can do control F and you can type in Chromevox. And once you have Chromevox turned on, I think you could also probably do Chromevox tutorial. So that's another good way to get there, but you'd have to get to settings first. Another thing here too, we're, we're getting close to running out of time, is support.google.com is very searchable. I know that sounds like a joke that you can just Google it, but yes, being a Google product, it's actually been really easy. Anything you need to find, you can just search, you know, type in the thing, um, you know, what's the hotkey for Chromevox settings, which, you know, thank you, Matt, Chromevox plus O, and then followed by T for tutorial. You can just type these things in and then search for them and then you'll have the great resources. Now, Jim, thank you so much, Jim, for putting that in the chat. That is the website of Bruce McClanahan. And it is a great, great, great resource for all things accessibility. And he has a great section just about Chromebooks. Um, so check out that link. It's too long to say out loud, but it is in the chat. And he has documents. He has classroom, uh, you know, uh, you know, plan, plan, uh, planned out uh, teaching tutorials that you can do with your students. And I'll, I'll go ahead and throw it in the chat again. But yeah, this is the link to Bruce McClanahan's website. And I really recommend checking that out for all things accessibility. Let's get to our next poll question. And the final one is uh, what are ear cons? Your choices are an audiology conference, a comfortable shoe, or icons that you can hear. What are ear cons? audiology conference, a comfortable shoe or icons that you can hear. Where does the time go, William? Where does the time go? Yeah, no, it went by, uh, went by fast. I love all the great questions though. You got, you kind of, you want to plan, uh, you, you know, you got to plan for the possibility that no one's going to ask any questions. <laughs> And yeah, um, EarCons would be a great name for an audiology conference. If there's any other questions, please throw them in the chat. I thanks so much for the folks that have jumped into the chat with uh, with information that I didn't have available. I really appreciate that. It's always handy to have folks in the audience that can help out. 
I, and I, it's, it appears as though I have pulled a very rookie move. For the last hour, I've been dropping things into the chat for the host and the panelists, and not everyone. Oh, oh! I didn't That's even catch it. I like, wonder <laughs> why. Why? Uh, like I dropped that in there, so we got to start dropping some things into the chat as we wrap up. So, how about if I? Uh, how about if I end the poll? And uh, William, you want to tell everybody what the correct answer is while I scramble to uh, provide, <laughs> provide yeah. information that I haven't been providing for the last hour. Sorry about that, everybody. Bear with me here. Yeah, so ear cons are icons that you can hear. So that is the correct answer there. Um, I didn't, I think that was the, that was the most chosen answer. I don't see the results, but let's go ahead and wrap up here. Yep, we'll wrap it up and give you some discoveries here. Uh, so Chromebook pairs best with QWERTY devices and that makes the Mantis a very good solution for your students. Uh, with the Mantis, you can have access to Braille while using the same Google apps that their peers are using. And uh, learning hotkeys for Chromebox is going to allow users to easily set the preferences they need to, to set and navigate through apps. So uh, if you haven't seen it, or just a quick refresher, the Mantis Q40, uh, we've got a picture of that here. Uh, if you have access to quota funds, you can get it for $1,995. If you're not a quota user, the price is $2,495. And quickly, we also wanted to include the Chameleon since that is also our product and the, the software is similar. If you do want to use a, a Perkins style keyboard, a Chameleon, um, is available to you if you are a quota user it's $1,295 for non-quota users $1,595 for that yeah. product yeah thanks and the chameleon also works with chromebooks but you are going to end up in that situation where you're going to be using the qwerty keyboard on the chromebook and then having to jump over find the braille display use the braille display and then jump back to the qwerty keyboard back and forth back and forth um, it just doesn't have great Perkins keyboard support. There are Perkins keyboard hotkeys, but obviously there aren't as many and they can be a bit more complicated, but thanks so much everybody for coming here today. Thanks Sully, uh, thanks Paul for your help. Um, really appreciate it. If anybody has any other questions, you know, please send them in. I'll go ahead and drop my email in the chat and feel free to email me with any other questions. I saw somebody ask when narrator support was incoming. Um, I mean, we have really basic narrator support. Uh, narrator's got a ways to go. I'm rooting for them. I want narrator to be a great screen reader. It's getting better. I hear good things from folks generally in the field. Uh, a lot of folks are using narrator for like system level work. Like when they really need to go in depth on windows, they'll use narrator. Uh, but for now, I mean, JAWS and NVDA are the screen readers of choice on Windows. And I, I, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon, but, but I love competition. So uh, I, I'm really rooting for them.